Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Jane D and she's uh, Dr. Shamla. I teach the um, final year accounting paper, which is uh, financial accounting three. Basically it covers uh, the standards, accounting standards. So that's why my questions are aligned in that direction. And uh, Shamla teaches the auditing uh, unit, final year auditing unit. Um, what the purpose of us uh, doing this interview, we call it uh, leaders in accounting and finance. Uh, the objective is basically to um, bridge the gap between practice and what we academics are teaching you. And uh, we want to share this and we also want to share this with the students, the current students to show them that um, it's not all that bad studying our units. You know, they find sometimes uh, looking at accounting standards very dry. They find origin very dry. So when you actually, uh, when you all share what you all have, uh, are doing at the moment, and if I can put up the videos for them, they will really appreciate the units also. Okay, uh, so can I um, go around one by one? Can you all introduce yourselves? Uh, can we start with Elsa? Uh, I uh, I have gra uh, I graduated in 2016 in okay. Monash, Australia, and I started working in Australia first yeah. um, in 7-11 accounting department, then later on move on to another mining um, company accounting department, then later on move back to Malaysia PwC. And yeah, now I'm a senior associate in PwC. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, Jen? Uh, yeah, so I, Jen here, um, I graduated, I think, probably 2015. Yeah, and then um, I, I taught in Monash, uh, Australia as well. So I graduated in Monash, Australia, um, and I was one of the tutor there. Sorry, did you do a transfer, Sorry. Jen, or did you do a transfer from... Yeah. Okay. From Sunway, yes. Sure. So I did the first year there and then I went to Australia and then um, I taught in Monash for about two years after that, after I graduated. Okay. Uh, and then I moved back to Malaysia, um, EYKL, for three years and then now I'm in PwC Singapore. Yeah. And uh, uh, senior associate as well. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good achievement. Oh. Rachel, uh, yeah. JT? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so Rachel here, um, I graduated Monash, I think, three years ago. Um, yeah, so currently, uh, after I finished in Monash, I actually started with EYKL, and currently I'm an associate here, yeah. Okay, Rachel, you graduated from Monash, Malaysia, or Australia? Uh, Monash, Malaysia, all three years in Monash, Malaysia, yeah. Okay, and now you're working in KL too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, right. Um, I'll start the ball rolling. I think you you all have the questions. Uh, maybe I start with, um, can I start with Jen? Jen, I, I'm looking at um, accounting, uh, the financial reporting accounting standards. Um, my question is, um, um, like what I put here, uh, do you face any challenges uh, what you've learned in the, uh, while you are a student and coming out to practice? Um, I think definitely uh, a lot of challenges. I think firstly, because I, depending how long after, like, you know, after you take financial reporting and how long after you actually go to work, um, whether you actually remember what's required by the standard. So, Definitely, you have to refresh your memory while you actually work. Um, have to relook at the standard, but the, there's a foundation there, so you just sort of refresh your memory what you have learned. Um, I think the other other part that I think I face challenge the most is really interpreting what the standard means. You know, the way how they word the standard is not plain English that you can actually understand. You actually need to read a few times, even um, ap applying daily basis. Uh, even when you see practical examples. Um, when you read the standard again, you can't really get what they actually meant because the standards are quite vague sometimes. Yeah. So that was one of the main um, thing that I faced. Yeah. Okay. They have the challenge. Um, Elsa? 
Yeah, I agree with Jen, <laughs> the interpretation <laughs> part. For example, I think last year or two years ago, there were new implementation of MFRS, uh, IFRS 15, 9 and 16, right? Yep. I think that's, that's where everybody struggled the most, including uh, our client. Like they are not even sure like, oh, how do we determine this? Like, uh, actually, like let's say there's one sentence they say, oh, you can use a discount rate, but actually a discount rate, what does it mean? There's like a lot of interpretation, interpretation towards it. So in a way that there's a lot of like justification, I think that's the hardest part. And I think the hardest, one of the hardest part is also like what you say, like you need to read a lot of times and sometimes whatever you understand and whatever your peers understand are two different, totally different direction. And then that's like one of the obstacles I have. Like sometimes I have a different understanding from compared to my partner and then we will be arguing for a whole day for just that one sentence. So I think like um, understanding the, I think sometimes like learning the knowledge is not that uh, it's important, but it's, it's more important that how you apply it and then how you solve the problem when you interpret it. That's true. Uh, I think that's the, 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 the most challenging part to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what I feel is like what Jen said just now. Um, I, I always tell my students to actually do this unit in the final year you know, do it in the final year so that you, as you step out into the working environment, you will, uh, it's still fresh in your mind. Uh, and I always had this impression mm -hmm. that um, if you read one standard, the layout of that standard is a bit similar as you look at other new standards also. But you're right, uh, Elsa, the interpretation is so, uh, so important. Uh, I know some of the big schools have their own manual you all have that manual with you all. That means they uh, summarize it, summarize the standards and uh, give it to you all. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do, we do. Yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes, sometimes the summarize one is not that, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's not accurate. <laughs> Jen is laughing. I think you agree. It's not that it's not accurate, but when you need to come to a very specific industry. So let's say if I'm, right. I'm or let's say I'm, if I'm doing telco industry, the, the applic application to the standard compared to if you're doing a manufacturing is a little bit different. So sometimes maybe the... Yeah, so sometimes maybe the summarized manual is not that accurate. So I usually don't refer that. Yeah, <laughs> general, I think. Yeah, it could yeah be too general. general. What about you, Rachel? Um, because I took the third unit, uh, I took your unit in my final year, and then subsequently I joined EY like a few months after that. So Very good. actually, it really helped me. Yeah, it really helped me a lot in grasping the first few months uh, because. It's still in my mind and then just uh just knowing it, you know, and then like I can still search like oh like MFRS 15, like at least I know what it is. And then right. from there, like I deepen my knowledge via yeah, like research and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think like application also is very important because like like uh previously they said um what you read might not be what you apply. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Said, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. As you said, each industry, the application is going to be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The application for each different each industry is very different. Very different, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. What about this? Uh, what's the impact of COVID nineteen on your work at this point of time? Are you all having to adjust for clients? Is that, is that taking a, a challenge too? Are the clients demanding a bit more of leeway and so on? Uh, I think the main challenge is firstly, client will ask you, what should I do with COVID-19? What is the impact <laughs> on my financial statement? That is like the, the golden question that you know nobody has the experience <laughs> with. Like It's very, very judgmental. So the main challenge is everything is about judgment and it's really very, very difficult to ascertain like what is the correct treatment and, and okay, stuff. So, so it they, requires a lot of discussion. Yeah, so when they do throw that question to you all, how do you all uh, resolve the issue? 
uh, we definitely have to uh, have discussion with our directors and partners uh, to, to get back to client. And then um, within department as well. Uh, so my industry is banking. So what we did is like a banking-wide um, discussion. Uh, what is the main impact? Uh, yeah, COVID-19 on, on that. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, the um, MFRS9 would have uh, been a big impact for the banking industry, I'm sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which bank are you with? Which bank are you with? Uh, previously, last year in Malaysia, I was doing a uh, public bank. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, mm. How are, okay, another last question I want to just summarize. How do you all want to develop yourself from here? I know, uh, uh, Elsa, you are sitting for the TA exam. That's good. What about Jen? Uh, I completed my CA in that last year. Very so, good. yeah. So now, it definitely, I think, taking a further certificate uh, really make a difference in, you know, your future job prospects. That's right. Bargain, bargain power, I think. They are bargaining power. Yeah, yeah. because a lot of, a lot of uh, industry, like, they would prefer you have at least a professional qualification, they so-called. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, regardless you are CA, CPA, ACCA, IG, whatever it is, uh, I think they, they would prefer if you have. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what about you, Rachel? Um, I'm taking CA as well, so I still have two more papers left, tax okay. and capstone, yeah, which will be completed end of this year as well, yeah. Very good. Um, is there, a, I mean, this is a very obvious question that I'm asking you all, um, I know, uh, is there a big gap between our degree and the professional exam? Can you all cope with the professional exams after doing the degree? To be very honest, I find it no gap at all. <laughs> very good. Yeah. <laughs> it's very almost right, the same right. case that it's more, it's more in depth, yeah. maybe in certain ways, but like most of it, most of the papers are still, um, I feel like I've learned very it before, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've learned it honest, before, and then I just like, I just have to refresh yeah. my memory. That's such a great satisfaction. I super yeah. agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Because to be honest, I really yeah. didn't really study much. I just do the question. I'm like, eh, it, it looks yeah, like yeah, exactly yeah. the same what I learned in Monash. It's Very really, good. really yeah, uh, yeah. almost as good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, because I myself... I think the additional advantage was that it's open book. Yeah. Compared to uh, yeah, 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 undergrad. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, Jen, once mm -hmm. it's open book, uh, the questions are going to be that much more challenging. We are doing that now. It's an open book. Mm. We are setting more challenging questions for the students because otherwise they're going to be yeah. cut paste. We don't want that, you know? Yeah, mm. Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. More application. But honestly, I, yeah. I, yeah, but I think open book in a way is in a way more practical to me because I actually discussed this with my peers. Like they will, they will be saying, oh, why don't you do ACCA? You can take two, three, four papers at the same time. Then you can graduate faster and get your professional paper faster. But to me, I feel... Actually, there's no point for you to memorize and do the exam because in the end of the day, when you work, you yeah. always Google yeah. or refer to your accounting manner. Yeah. The most yeah, important yeah, thing is how you actually apply it. It's, it's no point where you memorize the knowledge and let it sit in your brain, but then you you have no idea how to apply it when it comes to like real life situation. Yeah. So to me, I prefer open book exam. <laughs> what about la one last thing about financial technology? How are you all keeping abreast with uh, the financial technology that's coming up so fast? Is it uh, very difficult for you all to cope with all this uh, computerization softwares and things like that? Um, okay, in, in PwC, there's a department called uh, Center of Excellence. Right. Whereby they would they would use the they would use like multiple different softwares to yeah. run things for you automatically and uh, last year I rotated to that department for six months Very so in a way I, 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 I feel I feel it's really important actually for us regardless your auditor or accountants yeah. or in finance yeah. I think it's really important for you to actually catch up with the um, current most trendy um, yeah. uh, what do you call it the, the apps to run and, and help help your work to be done faster and more yeah. efficiently. Yeah. And because human will have more error, but then software wouldn't. Yeah. 
Yes. So it's much more accurate. Uh, oh, so I, I, I would encourage uh, if there's anybody thinking, oh, should I learn the, the, the software? Should I not learn? Should I know the logic behind it? I, I really think you should learn. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree. Mm. Yeah, totally agree. Mm. Okay. Uh, I shall hand over to Shamla. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, JT. <laughs> okay. Well, my one is from the point of view of auditing, but maybe uh, financial reporting will also come in. Okay, can you just tell me, uh, when we had the CMO coming in, what were your greatest challenges as an auditor when you undertook the audit? Uh, Elsa, you want to start off first? You're talking about the MCO. <laughs> I think the greatest challenge. I think the greatest challenge is that um, most of the time, your client don't reply to you or uh -huh. they will be slow because actually it's in a way not their choice because Previously, they have been using, let's say, physical documents or whatnot, but then because of MCO, they couldn't go back to their office and retrieve it to you. So in a way, it's not their fault also. But luckily, the government actually grant another six months, was it? Three months, sorry, three months for, for the reporting. So in a way, it's better, but still it's a little bit difficult. And even when during the RMCO, where you can actually go and see your client, go and see the physical document, it will be hard also because they will be on rotation basis. Yeah. So in a way, I think the hardest thing is to plan out your timeline and the time where you when when you want to meet your client and plan your team. <laughs> so I think that's the I think that's the hardest thing <laughs> to to handle uh, to me. Can you just explain to me uh, when you say planning your team, what does it mean to you? Uh, because so let's say uh, senior usually you will do the reporting part everything then your junior would be doing the field work more so then um, and, and plus at the client place maybe they only allow a headcount of two people but my client is very big it's like very very big so two people is Okay. It's, it's impossible. So you really need to plan your resources properly. Or let's say today you want to see the financial controller. Okay, you go in today to see. And, and when, when the financial controller coming in, Monday, okay, so Monday you go. Then Tuesday, who is coming in? Or uh, the accounting department one coming in. Okay, so the other the other further go in. So you need to really plan okay. properly, but it's really, really tough Yeah, during, during this period. Uh. So you mean the staff yeah. numbers also reduce at that time, is it? Because of the CMO? MCO. The hit count, yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. What about Rachel? Mm. Um, yeah, because uh, actually I faced this challenge a lot as well, especially last year when they first implemented the first MCO. Like my accounts were going to be signed already, but then the MCO happened and then like everything got delayed and then my signing <laughs> delayed that to perform more procedures. And then like yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of things were delayed like, because of the MCO. And then like plus like Elsa said, um a lot of they were on rotation basis. Everywhere was very restrictive to go to. People it was very restrictive to meet my client as well. Yeah. Very hard to catch them yeah. basically. So <laughs> mm. yeah, that I I believe that that's the biggest challenge also. Like. Yeah. And looking for like especially for clients with uh who don't really maintain an elect electronical or like mm -hmm. online software that kind of thing or yeah. where they like the approval process online where it's like all physical documents and stuff like that then that really I mean, becomes a challenge yeah, mm -hmm. yeah oh, <laughs> <laughs> um i think first thing is what what made me realize is uh regardless of what happened in the world audit is so important that it will still go on <laughs> <laughs> so because my industry is banking, <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. So because I'm I'm auditing banks, so we can't actually. I would we can't take out the data from the bank, so we have no choice to actually be yeah. based at client. Yeah. So um, we just split split floors. Uh, the whole team actually goes there, but we split floors, and so regardless mm. of how 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 bad COVID is, we, we still got the letter to go to clients. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, audit is so important. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah. Really, yeah really. I, <laughs> even because all the bank staff also they still have to go to client, right? They can't actually yeah. work from home. All the yeah. all the staff, yeah, compared to other industries. Um, I but I think mm. yeah. The main challenge is also the meetings within the team. Everything is online and I think that one is across everyone, right? That was very tiring and the audit hours actually went up compared to uh, our usual time, which is really so bad. Uh, 
because of all this inconvenience. Uh, yeah. But um, like what Elsa mentioned, the planning of the team is very, was very important because I think we didn't get extension from Bank Legara. Uh, we still have to submit by the, the same three months, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Could I also ask you, uh, which were the industries that you faced had the uh, most challenging issues in terms of audit? Um, Jen, you want to start off first? <laughs> I, I think uh, my exposure is quite limited. Like, yeah, it's only banks. So, yeah. But the impact was pretty big because of the moratorium, the loan moratorium. That was a very, very big challenge to yeah. even to come out with the computation. Yeah. What is the impact of the moratorium? Yeah, And that is like, there is no past data to even look at the impact yeah. of the DCF and everything to the loans. And also the government grant yeah, to, the, to the banks. So that was the main thing that the main risk area last year that we faced. Then how did you deal with this in the auditor's report, um, this issues? Uh, we auditor's report, I think we just highlighted as a significant um, matter. Uh, but then I think ultimately it was quite a, it, it took a lot of discussion with Bank Negara. Like Bank Negara helped us out a lot with the, the, because ultimately they are the one that we are reporting yeah. to. So, yeah. Oh, okay, so you actually work quite closely with the regulator then? Yeah, the regulators, yes. Oh, okay, okay. What about Rachel? Uh, um, which industry are you with? Um, actually, I'm in uh, hospitality and infrastructure, but I've touched, I would say, quite a number of industries. And I think for COVID, the industries that would have impacted a lot last year was... I think the highways, because I was involved in the highway audit for Lytrack and Sprint, uh, the LDP and yeah. uh, Penchala Ling, you know? Yeah, yeah. so last mm -hmm. year, um, because of the change in government as well, <laughs> so there was, there was a whole highway <laughs> fiasco of whether to sell, whether not to sell, <laughs> and then and then top that up with like MC also, like we actually had to come up with like cash flow projections to project whether uh, the amount of traffic mm. volume was enough to, you know, That's sustain right. the uh, oh. company. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then because of that also, there were a lot of, uh, because all the subjects we had to like, go through and then like challenge. After challenging a client, then auditors will get challenged for using the assumptions as well. So, it all, yeah, that one was quite, uh, that one was quite tough, uh, yeah. And then, this year would be with the utilities company. So basically, this company uh, operates chiller plants and then collect uh, aircon, aircon fuel yeah, from the tenants. So there were going constant issues on the chiller plant as well because like, uh, everyone's working from home, right? Yeah. So no one is going into offices and then people aren't like using air conditioners as much. Yeah. So... This one will result in a cash flow projection analysis as well. Uh. Yeah. The sustainability of the... Yeah, basically the sustainability of the business. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir? <laughs> uh, for me, I'm in the manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm with um, uh, different production. I, I, I did a few different productions. One is, uh, is a tire, like your car tire. Another mm -hmm. one is milk production. I think the, the biggest challenge um, is that right during the the first the first the very first round MCO the very strict one the March and April, some of my client got like order to compuls compulsory shutdown. I think that's like the the worst thing uh, because uh, just like what Rachel say you would need to actually have a cash flow projection and do an impairment testing everything. So I think that's like the most challenging part because you they are actually making loss as a year end, as in 2020 year end, and then you wouldn't actually know is, is the is the travel restriction gonna continue? If yes, then is my tire tire company gonna gonna bankrupt or something? Because like I don't know if it impacts your because like so let's say for me, I already for the past two I, I think I, I haven't even serviced my car once up until now. Because <laughs> you didn't need <laughs> Oh, yeah. didn't really travel, right? So, so the, mm -hmm. 
yeah, so the Taiwan outbreak is so low, and then and then there is nobody buying at all. <laughs> so so there's like a worry there, and I also can't predict the future because I don't know this condition is gonna sustain until when. So I I just have to see the assumptions at all. Then for the milk industry, I think the hardest part is the logistic because during MCO period, of course, the food manufacturing <clears throat> is still be able to continue to work. But because of the logistics, so that's another part of challenging one because they, they are able to sell in Lazada, they are able to sell in Shopee or even okay. their own website. They started on e-commerce, correct, correct. So they started selling on e-commerce. So how are we going to audit this? <laughs> it's something quite quite different from the past yeah. because last time it wasn't a trend to buy online. Mm-hmm. But now there is, there's no past data to refer as well. <laughs> so all these, all these are very challenging to me, la. but it's a, it's a really an, uh, um, uh, learning ground, isn't it? Huh? Uh, yes, one. yes. Huh? This is so for these challenges yeah. in the industries you had. How did you manage to collect the audit evidence? Because you know the auditing literature says it must be sufficient and appropriate. So how did you overcome this problem? Especially oh, the- uh, like I said just now, yeah, yeah. Like I said just now, so usually we can still go back to client. So I think prior to whatever. Well, whatever accounts, uh, I mean, whatever uh, transactions they do prior to about April are still all in physical form. But later on, luckily, my clients are all listed companies. So they, they implemented the soft copy process very quickly. So there's no issue for any documents to be obtained after about June. But uh, whatever before June, then we will need to go back and site or we will ask the client to go back to the office to scan to us. Lah. Mm. So it's still okay. Oh. Mm. Okay, what about Rachel and Jen? How how did you overcome this problem of the audit evidence that you require during the COVID-19 pandemic challenge? Maybe mine will be similar to how Elsa overcame it because uh, I think Jen's in the banking industry, right? So she would still have to yeah. go back to uh, the bank to yeah. get all the evidence. <laughs> But for us, uh, I think because my clients all also use soft copies and then physical copies were used before the MCO hit, but soft copies were implemented subsequently as well. So for us, it would be much easier. Yeah. So how did you actually, when you, because you, you said there was a transition from the manual, so-called the old system to the e-commerce. Um, so how did you actually look at the internal controls of these companies? to see whether they are effective or not. We all man uh, in that audit. Uh for for my for my case, uh we uh in, in my company there's a IT uh, IT general environment testing team to actually test it. So uh after that we actually engage them to uh, specifically test a few things to ensure the controls are in place. That's, that's for my case. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. That means your client already mm. had an IT environment, is it? Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, okay, okay. But what about those companies mm. that never had IT, but then because of the lockdown, they had to use e-commerce? Then how do you open uh, uh, mm, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> So I guess yes. depending on the timing also, like whether you, because usually control testing, we do much more earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. If at year end, by the time the transition is second half of the year, we might not actually have time to do the IT testing. So we will, uh, there's this thing that you sort of do is like, it's called information provided by entity testing, right? So you actually perform work on the, uh, on the report that is like, you know, all those soft copy things. So it's very substantive, but that is the work around it. Uh, instead of testing, if you don't have enough time to do the IT testing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. All right. Then, uh, okay, can I also ask you when you're looking at um, uh, like substantive testing, do you all actually use uh, like the technologies like big data and data analytics in your audits? Yeah. Yeah. Um I think we use like power power BI, uh all those data <laughs> analytics to look at uh analyticals, um the, the correlation yeah. between the data. Yeah. Mm. I think especially uh, for okay. JE testing. But oh, this is by your in-house software, is it? 
Uh, no, no. no. Power BI is not in-house. Pardon? Power BI, Power BI auto rigs are not in-house. They are like uh, third party. But in-house usually we use for those journal entry testing. Yes, then then we use those in-house um, in -house software. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Like, are you okay? Well, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, for example, if you're looking at leasing, uh, you're going to be like looking at machine learning language because leasing the payments are sort of uh, recurring every month, is it, or quarterly. Do you all use machine language for auditing, leasing? Or do you all use rollover procedures? Maybe just explain what you, uh, what you, what you. Oh, okay. All right. Because like rollover procedures are where, for example, where the conditions have not changed. For example, like leasing, your payments are all on a regular basis. Yeah. So as an auditor, when you're doing the interim audit, you'll be looking at the internal controls and you think it's effective. Then instead of doing a testing on the leasing, you do a rollover. That means uh, you might do a rotational basis. So this particular year, you may not do it for the final audit, but you might do it for the next audit. So have you actually practiced rollover procedures before in your audits? Uh, in terms of leasing, for example? Lease, I think is a little bit difficult still because this is the second year, right? And uh -huh. plus there's like, and because of MCO, there is another amendments called rent concession. So it will be difficult for these two, I, I think particularly these three years to do. <laughs> so oh, okay, okay. so uh, uh, it will be hard for this. Lah. But other procedure, yes, we would do rollover when we are sure that in the past there is no issue in the internal control or there's no issue in any substantive. Lah. And it's not a risk to mitigate. Uh, it's not a procedure to mitigate other risks. Then yes, you can use the rollover method. So for which sort of transaction? Uh, uh, do you use the rollover form in your audits? For example, payroll, la. payroll, ah, uh, payroll can, because payroll is fixed, ma, and then it's not really mitigating any other financial risk. It's only within the payroll risk. So as long as there's no issue with in last year or control or in last year substantive, then you can actually roll over it for the, for two years. Then the third year you need to retest again, no? Oh, you all take a tour. So it's a policy within your audit firm, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. For the sake of the students, I want to also ask you, when you first come in to work as an auditor, uh, for your auditor's independence, do you do uh, some sort of a declaration? Mm. Yeah, okay. you have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you just you tell need. me the, the, the sort of details they ask you in the declaration? in terms of auditors independence when you join the team? Um, I think you have to do a yearly independence. Uh, mm -hmm. They will ask you about your family members, um, their, their, their interests, financial interests especially. You have to disclose your personal plus your, I think, immediate family. Mm -hmm. uh, and any, I think, any relationship you have in like, let's say, your audit client, all those need to be disclosed. Yeah. Oh, so it's that on a yearly basis, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. and every engagement before you enter, you also need to declare another time, particularly for that engagement. Like, I just want what, what Jen said, like, you will need to specifically say, or I, let's say I don't have loan with this particular company. I don't have uh, my immediate family to have loan with this company, particularly for the company. And one more is for overall for the whole year. Let's say I don't have share in whatever company the Let's say I'm from PwC. We I don't have a significant amount of share, uh, with this um company that PwC is auditing. Uh, we have to declare things like this. What happens mm. if you have a, a financial interest? I say like shares. Then what will happen? You won't. Uh, no, uh, just declare. declare that. Then you won't be part of the audit team, is it? Yeah, yeah. most likely. Yeah. Oh, okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Mm. Mm. So much declare. Myself. Yes, so it's done oh, every yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because and it's then one another of kind of uh, yes, yeah, yes. another kind of declaration is like a competition examination. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, so so let's say I am doing one of the tire company, 
then um, and this company has an agreement with PwC saying that oh if your if if your team is working on me, they can't oh they can't work with my competitors. Oh, so I then see. you have to declare. That. That's one of another one. Depends on whether that client has that kind of uh, agreement with PwC. If yes, then you have to do also this examination declare eh, competi competition examination. Otherwise, you don't need to lah. Okay. What's the purpose of, of having this competition examination? I think it's to avoid you. Yeah, I think it's to avoid you to have not an independent view of the company, things like that. Uh, to oh, make sure that okay. uh, you uh, and also, I think PwC also have to declare saying that I don't have shares or any interest in other your competitors, something like that. We also have to declare one. So, this so is, it depends yeah, whether the this is an accounting firm level, is it? I or think it's, it's no, I think it's firm. accounting. Mm, audit firm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. That's quite interesting. I didn't realize that was this thing as competition declaration. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is, there is. But depends on client one. Not all client has that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, right. Okay, uh, the other thing that I want to ask you is um, uh, when you all do audits, do you see there's a link between financial reporting and auditing? And what advice you can give your the students that we have? <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you go. <laughs> I mean, you audit everything is based on the financial reporting standard so you definitely need to know the, the standard quite well um, but practically there are a lot of grey area where you sort of most of the time you do an impact assessment kind of thing like how much it varies and it goes by materiality so there's always a leeway in, 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 in practice but um Financial reporting uh, knowledge is very, very important. And even until today, every day we are reading the standards. We, if you ask us yes. immediately a question, even client asks, we won't be able to answer. We say, let's go back and, and have a read. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And, and the question has to be very specific. Otherwise, when you read, you will be like a headless chicken and don't know what to answer, actually. Hi, Neil. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Neil, now we start on you. Um, <laughs> you, you, you've, got, you've got both uh, the question set of questions. Just give us a point of view uh, on your standards, accounting standards, and your application in practice. Um, it, uh, what what are the challenges you are facing? Let me uh, from okay. academic to practice. Academy was so many years back, uh, but again, uh, because standard change. Quite, quite a lot. Standard change quite a lot, especially actually with the leases. Uh, if you, <laughs> you know the MRF sixteen sixteen leases, I was the one doing uh the MRF sixteen leases because I was with one of the retailer previously. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what 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 problem do we have is uh because it was so new uh and again with uh what COVID impact. Yeah. I mean, there are practical accidents. There, there are so many things going around. Um, I mean, we are like headless chickens. We are the client. We have to chase the auditor. Hey, what should I do now? Where, 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 what am I supposed to recognize? I mean, I can't be recognizing everything on modified approach because whenever there's rent, example, example, when, whenever there's there's a rent uh, discount given by supplier, I can't be doing yeah. modification every time, right? right. So, so that, that, I mean, when, when we chase with the when we chase the auditors, the auditors came out with the um, I mean, can give us a solution uh, where you can just wait and uh, apply the practical experience and so on and so forth. So whatever that you studied, uh, I would say uh, is good because at least you got a base when the client asks, what would you know about leases and what is the, what was in the past and what's now or what's that changes. But when you try to apply it, uh, a bit difficult uh, because for someone like a bit probably like seven or eight years behind after school, uh, probably it's going to be different. Things like that. How, mm. how long have you been working, Neil, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, uh, seven, eight years. Eight years. <laughs> I think yes. Yes. So, you are a Monash, uh, Malaysia graduate? Uh, Monash, one year and two years in Clayton. Okay, very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and one year in Clayton. And, and finished uh, the cancer. Okay, and uh, where are you now? 
Uh, I'm uh, I I was with a retailer, but currently I just changed uh, to a, a a a new setup company. Uh, uh, it it deals with industrial service. Okay. But I'll be but but the job now is uh we are we are doing everything in remote. So my my I don't say my client. I mean my company is in Hong Kong. So I'll be doing most of job uh for Hong Kong instead of okay. Malaysia. So okay. I think that's the yeah that's that's the, the 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 new thing that I mean every company is doing where yeah. you have everyone in doing things in remote. So yeah, remotely, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. 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 So when even then uh if you if you are agree with a uh, uh the, the auditor itself when, when they come to audit they will come come to tell me a different story again so uh, <laughs> so things like that i'm so sorry to say that I, i've been auditor before so i i do understand that okay things things do happen and things do change but again when you're at the client side uh you're you're thrown under the bus when, the, when a director asks you, I mean, why is it that this issue comes up again when it's supposed to be resolved uh, previously? Because, I mean, as a client now, uh, we have, we have, I mean, as a finance, uh, we take very proactive approach to engage the auditor as soon as possible so that yeah. when it comes to the year and I mean, right. come to the audit, they, you please leave us at peace. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't give me yeah. a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, so what things, you're yeah, saying is. Yeah, so what you're saying is getting the auditors maybe more than once a year, do an interim. Are you talking I mean, about uh, interims being interim, interim, they do a lot of discuss on fees. I mean, <laughs> they talk on fees, they talk on things other than issue itself. So right. when you really want to engage, you really need to engage them uh, from formally through emails or whatever, yeah. just, just on specific issues. Okay. Because in turn itself, they can discuss a lot of other issues. I mean, yeah. impairment issues, whatever issues that yeah. you have. I mean, they are not very specific. They are just intro, let's say, the change name, new change team members, and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, that, 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 sorry, not, not done yet. Uh, that's, that's on the, on the application side. During the implementation side of FRS 16 was also a, a horrible experience. We <laughs> being, uh, <laughs> So sorry, it's, it's, it's like a it's like a crying session now. Uh, the, the, I mean things to share in, in practical That's because good. yeah, yeah you. It, it, you all need to understand. Yeah, because during implementation stage itself, I'm the one who, who drive the implementations of FS 16. Again, uh, I as a client, I mean I need to read from beginning. I mean do attend courses, things like that. Yeah. So whenever we have a uh I mean we have an accounting firm uh, to come and uh, help us with the data. And when this accounting firm is different from the, uh, the, audit, the, the one that you engage as auditors, yeah. they start to have, uh, uh, because of independence issue, we, we, don't, we, we can't get them the same from yeah. the same audit firm. Right. So that, that, was yeah. the yeah. that, that was the beginning, that was the beginning. But then in the end, we, we decided we, we, we will just follow wherever, I mean, we will just get back to the one uh, that has, I mean, the one who audit us. Okay. I mean, but but it's a different team. Uh, the reason being because I mean, we you, I mean, everyone need to learn that. Um, I mean, they are the one who audit us, and and when they come us come come and give us uh, a different opinions, that things will get very complicated, yeah. and uh, fees do get burned. I mean, the the one that uh come uh, uh, the audit firm A says yes, and then you say no, it it boils back back down to the audit the audit firm in the end. So I think that. What you already spend on professional fees of a few hundred thousand in the beginning, it just go down the drain. <laughs> yeah, it just get burned. <laughs> this, this this is a real issue. I'm saying this is a real issue. This this is what I experienced before. So, so whenever you you learn, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's different from whatever that you yeah. going to imply. It it is more challenging out there, definitely. It's very very challenging. Yeah, it's very very challenging. <laughs> But you know, okay. y'all are young, and y'all are um, your absorption power is great now. So they always say the first ten years, if you can hurdle the first ten years, you get all the experience, and then you set your pathway. You know, you set your pathway after that. Shamna, anything else, Shamna? Um, okay, can I ask you when you left the audit firm to join this company new? Um, 
what, what was the reason that you did it? Is, is it for your job no. satisfaction? This is interview question. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I, no offense to the audience. Sorry. Here are the youngest ladies here are still so audience. Sorry. Me, I want to get my experience with the audience <laughs> then move on. Yeah. That, 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 that was the initial thought. But then the audience answer is so tough. I mean, back yeah. in my time, uh, it, it was very, very tough. I mean, what time do I not off from job? It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, uh, I was like, oh, that's not, that's not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what's the worst is the next day <laughs> the next day the client want the tax the, 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 the tax the tax result so I mean uh, on uh, truth I mean I was uh, being an actor for four years I mean I say that's it I mean I mean I can, I can do other other yeah. stuff la. I mean I, I mean I, 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 I I'm I probably I'm not too ambitious as my the fellow ladies here who want to be partners <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the timing was was very bad. The timing was very. Bad. If if it was managed mm. well, I mean, I quite like the the work itself. I mean, even now, I'm mean, I'm also a com. I mean, I would see myself as a commercial plus finance because currently, I mean, you you don't ha- you don't have a job as a finance finance. I mean, the job as finance finance now is very very boring. <laughs> uh, uh, now we call it a finance business partner. If you, yeah. if you know it. As, yeah. as it is, uh, so you are being business partner to uh, marketing, being being part business partner to operations. I mean, uh, there's there are more things than you see as being a standards itself. I mean, the, the accounting standards. That's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. depends on what you like. I mean, yeah. for for myself, yeah. I just can't stand it. <laughs> Okay, the other thing I wanted to ask is, oh, sorry, about this continuous uh, development. Did you all actually uh, practice that after you graduated? Continuous uh, improvement or professional learning to keep yourself abreast? As, as auditors, I don't think we need that thing. I mean, we, did, we don't need to attend. We, we don't need to sign up for this course, to that course, pay 2000 for another course. But as a class, I mean, I mean, as commercials now, uh, you you need to, I mean, the company will need to pay for you to go to the courses. I mean, things like that. And at least you go for the tech one, which is uh, not so taxing. <laughs> I would say the tech conference. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Other than that, like FR16, I mean, when, when it's really very applicable to your job, you, you really need to go for it. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> you really don't know how to do it. <laughs> I mean, it is for myself. I mean, let them stick for themselves, okay? I think they have said, uh, <laughs> uh, they have said that they've, jo- they've done their professional exams, they are doing their CA exams, so they are moving on and developing themselves, which is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what shall we do is um, I will wind up here. Will that be? Is there anything else you'd like to contribute? And um, really appreciate. Um, all your contribution, your time given, and this is valuable uh, sharing of information that we have received from all four of you all. Right? Thank you so much. And uh, I need to give you all, um, 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 we, uh, we really need to thank you for all this. Thank you so much. And this will be shared with the students and, um, and uh, also with our head of department. Shamla? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Rachel, Jen, and you, and Elsia, for giving us your time. Okay. Today. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry thank for you. being late again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's a working day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.